What if migraines are not the neurological or neurovascular problem that you thought they were? What if migraines are in fact a metabolic problem? At least a metabolic problem in origin. In this video, I'll explain to you why that could absolutely be the case for most people who struggle with migraines. And the really great news is that once you understand what's happening in the brain, and no, it's not that complicated, it's actually a lot simpler than you think, then it means that there is actually something you can do about this. That doesn't mean taking another tablet. So hi, my name's Robin. And I used to struggle with migraines for days every month, for decades. And now I'm mostly migraine free. I get about one migraine a year on average. And every time I get one, it's a teacher and I'm learning. So I'd like to share that with you and what I've been learning. One of these things is about this potential metabolic problem. And it turns out that back in 1935, migraines were known as hyperglycemic headaches. Now hyperglycemia is where you have low blood sugar. So it's really interesting that there was a connection made then about blood sugar and energy use and metabolism with migraines. Then the science shifted more towards studying the neurological side or the vascular side or even perhaps the psychological aspect of migraines. But now there is a lot more focus again on the metabolic underlying problem that is causing migraines. Now there are two issues that can happen with your metabolism when it comes to migraines, at least two primary main issues. And just as a quick aside, when we talk about metabolism, we're talking about the mitochondria. The mitochondria are those little powerhouses in the cell that take fuel and create energy in the form of ATP. Now what can happen with these mitochondria is two things. One is that your cells are not getting the fuel in that they need in order to create energy. And the second thing is that your mitochondria might not be using that fuel very well in order to create the energy. So in this video, I'm going to talk about the first problem about not getting enough fuel in, because the reason is that this probably affects most people that struggle with migraines, or if it's not the direct cause of the migraines, it could absolutely be exacerbating the problem. And the reason I say that is because a recent study showed that about 88% of adults in America have some level of metabolic dysfunction. And that's known as insulin resistance. That's a huge number. 88% of adults in America are found to have some level of insulin resistance, which is anything from a little bit of insulin resistance all the way through to type 2 diabetes and Alzheimer's or dementia with a heck of a lot of insulin resistance. So what is insulin resistance? It's essentially two things. One is that your body, certain cells in your body are not responding very well to the hormone insulin. In the case of a migraine, it's your brain cells. And the second thing is that you have more insulin now than you did before. This is hyperinsulinemia, high insulin levels. And what happens here in the brain is that this persistently high insulin causes insulin resistance in certain brain cells, which means that it then compromises your brain's ability to take up glucose and it needs the glucose to fuel the brain. Your mitochondria need the fuel source. And so they use the glucose in order to create energy for the brain. And what happens is that in migraineurs, a lot of migraineurs actually have a hyper excitable brain, a brain that needs more energy than the average person. So you have a situation here where your brain needs more energy, but it can't get the glucose. It can't get the fuel in, in order for the mitochondria to produce that energy because your cells are insulin resistant and they're not responding to the signal of insulin, which would normally act like a, a knock on the door to say, okay, open up, take in the glucose. That signal is not working very well. So there's all this glucose there because maybe you've just had a sugary meal, but the brain cells can't take it up. So what happens then is that now the brain is starving for fuel and it cries out saying, I need fuel. Send me another fuel. Send me ketones. 
because the brain can use ketones and in fact it prefers ketones in, in many cases but your body can't produce ketones while insulin is high because high insulin actually blocks the production of ketones in the liver so you can't get ketones you can't take up the glucose now there is an energy gap an energy deficit in the brain where you need X amount of energy in order to function but you're only getting this much energy because the brain cells can't take up the fuel. This creates a crisis in the brain, an energy crisis that results in a migraine. So what are we to do with this problem? Well fortunately insulin resistance can actually be reversed which is great and if the brain prefers ketones, we can also provide the brain with a different fuel source. We can provide it with ketones, but we can't do that if insulin is high. So we need to find a way to lower insulin and that will reverse the insulin resistance, which means that the brain could actually take up the glucose if it wanted to and the body can produce ketones as well. So lowering insulin is a really, really important first move in solving your migraine problem. Because, like I mentioned, 88% of most adults in the U.S. had this issue of insulin resistance and most of them didn't know about it. So you might not know that you have an insulin issue, but it might very well be causing your migraines or exacerbating them. The brain is a hybrid vehicle. It needs glucose and ketones to really perform well. But the ketone tank is empty and while insulin is high, your body can't produce any ketones. So what we need to look at doing first is lowering our insulin. If we can lower insulin, then the body can go back to producing ketones like it's designed to do. And the brain can use a mix of ketones and glucose to fuel the brain optimally. And one of the ways to do that is with a low carbohydrate diet or a ketogenic diet. Now, interestingly, 150 years ago, the treatment was found for epilepsy. And now you might think to yourself, epilepsy, what has that got to do with migraines? Well, actually, what happens in the brain between epilepsy and migraines is actually there's quite a lot of similarities there. And migraines are more related to epilepsy than they are to tension headaches. And this treatment that was discovered 150 years ago was a treatment where they tried fasting these epileptic patients. And it stopped the attacks. But what they discovered is that you can't fast every day, day in and day out. So they created a fasting mimicking diet that kind of tricked the body into thinking that it was in glucose starvation, but they were still eating something. It just was the types of foods that wouldn't load the body with glucose or spike insulin as we now understand it. And so the body was under the impression that it wasn't getting any glucose, so it ramped up ketone production. And this was the basis for the ketogenic diet. Now, you could do either fasting, or you could do a ketogenic diet, or you could take exogenous ketones, so a ketone supplement. All of these things could help you. Just note, though, that fasting is one of the major triggers for migraines. Especially if you have hyperglycemia. Now, how do you know if you've got hyperglycemia? Well, I used to have this and I didn't know I had hyperglycemia. I didn't know it had a name like that um, for my symptoms at least because my symptoms were symptoms that I thought that everyone had. I would feel a little bit of an energy slump in the afternoon. I would feel maybe sometimes not satisfied after eating. I would feel impatient or hangry if I hadn't eaten in a while and I thought everyone had that. But it, no, it turns out that is hyperglycemia, some of the symptoms of hyperglycemia. And that is absolutely contributing to your migraines or making it worse. So you want to get that under control. And this is why fasting is actually one of the triggers for migraines, because until you do get that under control, your blood sugar is all over the place. So you eat something and your blood sugar spikes, which spikes insulin. And most people live in a state of high insulin all the time because they're always consuming carbohydrates that spike insulin. So for the average person, the average normal healthy person, insulin would spike after you eat and it would come down within two to three hours back to normal fasting levels. But if you are always eating 
every two to three hours, you know, because there's a lot of advice out there that says you should be eating six small meals a day. You should be having snacks between your meals to keep your blood sugar regulated. Now, in fact, it's the opposite is true. Every time you eat, you spike glucose and you spike insulin. And then if you always have chronically high insulin, you develop insulin resistance. And then when you have insulin resistance, the cells can't take up the glucose they need in order to fuel the brain. But the problem with fasting when you have hyperglycemia is that you can't get the glucose into the cells. And then you maybe skip a meal and your body's not used to this and your blood sugar drops too low. Now there's even less glucose available for the brain and this triggers the energy crisis even quicker, which is why fasting can so often trigger a migraine for those who suffer from it. But it's actually the hyperglycemia that sets you up for that problem. So you really have to get your hyperglycemia under control first. And then fasting is an incredibly effective way of producing ketones and preventing migraines. It's absolutely highly, highly effective. But you just can't start with fasting straight off the bat. You need to first go for a low carbohydrate or ketogenic diet to help you increase the fats that are going to fuel you while you then limit your meals down to three meals a day instead of having the snacks in between. And then you could go down to two meals, even one meal a day. But you have to do that gradually so that you can prevent the migraines from happening and prevent any hyperglycemic issues from happening. And if you found this video interesting, if you'd learned something new about this energy deficit in the brain and the metabolic problem that underlines so many of the, the migraines that people suffer with, then please share this with anyone you know who might suffer from migraines and like the video if you liked it and then subscribe so that you can see future videos on more of these topics about what I've been learning to fix my migraines and what will almost certainly help you too.